first bill up this morning is uh, House File 27, and Representative Anderson, would you care to move that bill? Yes, Mr. Chair. I move that uh, House File uh, uh, 2517 be referred to the Property Tax and Local Government Finance Division. Representative Anderson moves that uh, House File 2517 be re referred to the Property Tax and Local Government uh, Division to Finance Division. Good morning, Representative Miller. Good morning, Mr. Chair. Representative Anders, uh, Anderson, thank you for uh, moving that bill, Mr. Chair and members. I want to thank you for allowing me to present my bill today that I like to call the Beginning Farmer Homestead Act. As Patrick Luneman, president of Minnesota Milk Producers, said yesterday in our joint hearing, the average age of a farmer is in their late 50s. I believe he said it was probably about age 57. And I doubt that that age will get younger anytime soon. There's, there's many contributing factors. Um, there's just the flat out cost to be a, to farm, cost to be a farmer. There's um, interest of children, of current producers to go into other professions. You know, 50 years ago, if you grew up on a farm, at least some, if not all of you would farm. That's not so much the case anymore. And then uh, perhaps one of the bigger reasons is, is the lack of ability to secure farmland. As you know, Mr. Chair and, front and members, uh, farmland is not cheap. Renville County, why is that irritating? I just said Renville County is irritating on live uh, recorded. <laughs> That'll show up, won't it? Check so, your cell uh, phones. I don't know if that's the cause, but yep. check so, them anyway. Uh, I'm fine. Uh, in Renville County, just a few years ago, I know of some land that sold for $13,000 an acre. Uh, that's on the high end, and it's come down a little bit, but as you know, it's still this last year, the numbers I was hearing about, $7,000 an acre. Plus, people own their land for their retirement. They rent it out, and rent can be as much as $400 per acre where I come from. And uh, since much of this land is still under debt, it used to be the goal for landowners to own their land outright by the time they retired, and that would be the retirement while well, some of them are still paying for their land now. So they have costs involved also. Um, with high input costs included to farm, Pulling an even, even a modest 30 to $50 profit an acre can be difficult. Every extra dollar counts. The Beginning Farmer Homestead Act is intended to address this challenge to provide new farmers an opportunity to get a foothold in the industry. So law right now uh, provides homestead classification for farmland that is owned within four townships or cities of the owner's house and more than 20 acres. Homestead is about, 50, is about a 50% reduction in property tax costs. Also in law, currently, family members can farm the land and the homestead classification remains. However, if anyone else leases the land other than the direct family, the homeland, the homestead, pardon me, classification ends. This, I've found, can be an increase of anywhere to 20 to $40 per acre. On a 250-acre tract of land, that can be as much as $10,000 for a year. So I, I spoke uh, before session started, this was late last fall, to a southern Minnesota farmer. This is what brings me here. And I've been asking around and I've been hearing supporting stories of this. But he contacted me and said he recently retired and he um, had wanted, he saw a young farmer trying to get a start. And as you all know, it's difficult to get that land. And he wanted to give this young farmer a break and even give him reduced rent because of it. However, when he handed it off, when he wanted to hand it off to this young farmer, uh, his property taxes went from $30 per acre up to $60 an acre, basically prohibiting him from being able to rent it at a lower rate, and this young farmer was unable to rent it. So he lost out. He had to move on from there. So my bill, the Beginning Farmer Homestead Act, simply allows the homestead designation to be extended to a person leasing land to a person when he or she leases to a beginning farm, here's the designation, a beginning farmer has farmed land as a sole proprietor or partner for less than 10 years. The person holds less than, I have on, on the books, less than $350,000 plus inflation in assets since 2004. So I saw in your notes that it's $450,000. I believe that's probably the adjusted amount, but I can't confirm that. And then the beginning farmer must file an affidavit with the county to qualify. So that's what I'd like to present, present as, as was forwarded by Representative Anderson. This would be moved on to uh, the Property Tax Division. I thank you for your time and I ask for your support. Thanks, Representative. Uh, we have enough here now for an official quorum, so I will officially call the meeting to order. 
And we're going to have to do this again, Representative Anderson. Could you officially uh, introduce the bill again, please? Yes, Mr. Chair. Just uh, I move that the House file uh, 2517 be referred to, re referred to property tax and local government finance division. Thanks, Representative Miller or Anderson. <laughs> Any questions from members of the committee on House file 2517? Representative Poppy. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And Representative Miller, I'm just um, just clarify for me: is the the credit or the benefit really going to the beginning farmer or to the landowner um, who is in the process of um, supporting the beginning farmer? Representative Miller, uh, Mr. Chair, Representative Poppy, thank you. That's a that's a very good question. The actual um, homestead credit goes to the landowner. That's where it'll be realized. In the case of uh, the farmer to the south, um, he would have extended it on directly. I can't say that every single landowner would for sure extend that on. However, I view this even if they don't literally dollar for dollar extend that on, that will incentivize them to uh, look for some of these beginning farmers. What you, what you typically see, um, and when I move this on, I'll have some testifiers that will testify to this. What you typically see is, is not, traditionally the farmers, son and daughter or daughter just go to do engineering or go do something else but there's a good chance that someone in that in that area there's a young farmer who does want to get started and they're begging and looking for land i believe that these people will see this as an opportunity to kind of bring those two together and uh will allow these young farmers to be able to farm any further questions Representative Miller, I just have a clarification to ask you. Um, we are not talking here about absentee landlords being able to uh, qualify for any uh, reduction in taxes. You're talking about the contiguous land that, that currently is homesteaded, correct? Mr. Chair, thanks for that clarification. That's correct. The current, the cur current homestead is extended to people is based off of um, you have to have, you have to live, the landowner has to live within four townships and or town cities for this for this uh, for this to qualify okay thanks for that clarification yep. representative Bly yeah. yes thank you chair and I uh, appreciate your question um, I have a, uh, another question um, kind of wondering about where it goes to and it uh, you know I it occurs to me that it might be possible for um, for someone to uh, stretch this a little bit and you know they, they want to rent the land so they have a younger member of their family whatever who uh, could you know, uh, qualify for this, but they're not necessarily the main person who would be doing the farming. Is that, you know, is there, do you have a protection against something like that where somebody might try to, you know, game the system to, to get that? You know, thank you. Representative. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Representative Bly. Uh, the way that the law is written, um, first of all, just to clarify, any family member can already get this, gets this credit. I knew, I knew what you meant, though, if there's someone, is there anyone that can game this? They're required to, number one, be a sole proprietor of an actual farm, and number two, they have to file an affidavit stating that they fit these qualifications with the local uh, county. So I suppose if there's a situation where someone says they really are not living to the spirit of uh, this bill, the county would have the responsibility to basically reverse that, uh, that uh, uh, property tax relief. Yeah, just to clarify again, this is already available to uh, siblings of, of farmers to get the, to get the homestead. Anybody, uh, Representative Poppy? Thank you, Mr. Chair. I think that raises another question for me. I just remember hearing from my you know local county assessor. They're concerned about the great number of uh, um, classifications that we have. This appears to be then another classification or another definition that they are going to have to. Um, be concerned about, aware of, and um, able to um, use. And I'm just a little, cons uh, so just to yeah. clarify for me or help me just to understand um, what kind of complexity you might be adding or how is this really going to work in, for them? Representative Miller. Uh, Mr. Chair, Representative Poppy, I fully understand our complex property tax system and that I confess is a burden that this place is this this place is a further burden on on the system and um, 
I thought about that and I believe that the that the benefit of this does exceed does outweigh that in this case. Um, to answer your question directly, because they have to file that affidavit, that should be a pretty clear identifier to the county. I also, in practicality, realize this will be a benefit and will be used, but it won't be used across the board for all farms. When I say it will be limited, I'd love to see this happen in a lot of cases, but of all the farms in any given county, I don't anticipate you'll see this relief other than a specific handful of times. And with that affidavit, they have very clear filing. So I don't think this will add burden to the county assessor's work per se. It'll just be something they have to do at one time until such time as that affidavit is no longer relevant. And that will be uh, vetted further in the next stop. Uh for yes. this bill, but I think we have a testifier from the audience uh, who would care to comment okay. on that uh, tax implication assessing situation on this bill. Good morning, Mr. Mayor. Morning, Mr. Chair, members of the committee. Uh, my name's Tom May. I'm a retired Hennepin County Assessor and I'm representing the Minnesota Association of Assessing Officers. Uh, each year before the legislative session, we prepare a position statement and the third bullet on our position statement reads, uh, and I'll read through that, MAO supports consolidating agricultural land and buildings, excluding house garage one acre into a single classification rate. Changes to the qualifications for agricultural homestead have added to the complexity of administration of the agricultural homestead classification and confusion on the part of the taxpayers. Uh, with that said, I would also state that we would be opposed to uh, House file 2517 because of the nature of the bill. It's the first time I think we've uh, approached a, a situation where actively farming goes outside the family. Um, although, if you read on 2.22, it says a relationship under this paragraph may be by either blood or marriage. So I'm not positive whether that's still part of the bill uh, or not. Um, as many of you may know, uh, actively farming is one of the hardest classification things that assessors do in, the, in their job, and especially uh, outstate. Probably you've seen this chart before. It's prepared by the Department of Revenue, and it, it shows a decision-making uh, matrix for actively farming. There's 35 decision points on it right now. Uh, we've tried over many years to reduce the number of these uh, decision points and make this less complex, uh, but this, again, would, uh, would make it more complex. Would this require a farmer to furnish to you a Schedule F form? Uh, I, I can provide you with a, okay. this form. Yes. Well, I mean, the farmer's farm Schedule F on his tax return, would you have to see that to qualify somebody as being actively involved in agriculture? Um, I'm not an expert in actively farming because I come from the metro area, but okay. I know our assessors who do this. Um, I'm not sure that we deal with the income and we try to stay away from that. And in this case, we would try to stay away from any kind of uh, income analysis also. That's well, not an in income analysis, but I think there's some cases where you have to prove that you're an active farmer. And uh, one way that's done is to provide a Schedule F off your, off your tax return. So uh, continue yes, on. They probably rely on that, yes. Yeah. Um, with that, I would uh, be open to any questions you might have. Questions from anybody on the on the committee? If not, thank you very much. Thank you for your testimony. I'm sure we'll hear more about that on the next stop of the committee. Anybody else in the audience who would care to comment or testify on House File 2517? If not, Representative Anderson, would you care to renew your motion? Yes, Mr. Chair, I renew my motion at House File uh, 2517. 17 be re-referred to the property tax and local government finance division. Representative Anderson has made his motion to uh, re-refer this House File 2517 to the property tax and local government uh, finance division. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. The motion is passed. Thanks, Representative Miller. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, members.